as far as the presidential vote is concerned. We have always known that the MPP will misbehave. But let their misconduct conduct and their misbehavior not deter you and scare you. Somebody should tell him about Fado. Masa, history has a very interesting way of repeating itself. On the 13th of January 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutu Atampo eh? mm -hmm. removed, led an insurrection, led a, a movement that removed the Progress Party from power. Bouzia was the Prime Minister, Akufadu Sada was the ceremonial president. Somebody should tell Nana Akufadu that history has an interesting way of repeating itself. I'm telling you, history ah. has a very interesting way. Oh, Master Amida Makan, history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Because, uh, 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 President, no, no, but, but uh, General, they are working a very serious power. Oh, no, 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 Eh, uh, but um, 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 reference to Ignatius Kutu. Oh, Joshua Kabadi, Mami Madima. Um, reference to Ignatius Kutu a champo. Say, what Baba too, a year Kufuado Papa. And you busy. Say, he's new who repeats himself. And no, then yes, civil revoke. And no, then yes, civil revoke. General Pacha, one of the I say, hey, well, are you president? Yay. There will be a civilian coup d'etat. Hey. There will be a social revolution. Hey. We are starting on Wednesday. The movement is starting on Monday, Wednesday. Civilian could be the first time. We have to the first time in the Yumbe to Ghana. So, so, the baby. You're not fooling. Welcome to Good Evening Ghana. Thank you very much uh, for your time. And, um, tonight we have to focus on that as our top story. We do have other stories for you. And uh, we do have also a birthday celebration coming up. But the statement made by Kokoa Nidoho, which has caught national attention tonight because of the involvement of the police. The police have decided to arrest him and charge him. The latest report is that he's been driven out of the police headquarters. We will bring you the very, very latest updates with our reporter who has just returned to us from the police headquarters with the latest pictures and interviews granted to people. And the final address that Johnson Asidun Katia had given, you hear it first before you hear it tomorrow morning on radio. Johnson Asidun has finished addressing the NDC members, and um, you have to hear what he said. But we decide, we, we believe that the, rec the comments of Mr. Anidoho were very reckless this evening. Uh, he was asking for a coup d'etat. Tonight, we'll take you through uh, the story, photographs, and videos of the story that he was talking about. He was talking about the story of 1972. Of course, you know that on this program, we are the sole repositors of Ghana's uh, historic events and the historic videos. So we will show you the story of it. We will also show you a very... Uh, uh, a big disagreement that Professor Adai, Ivan Adaimenson, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, who was also the General Secretary of the PNP government that won the elections in 1979, how violently he disagrees with Mr. Anidoho tonight. Professor Adaimenson spoke to us on the issue uh, much, much earlier. Uh, it turns out that uh, his comments have become very, very relevant, opposite comments to Mr. Anidoho's comments tonight. So we'll show you that as well. We would also show you how a coup d'etat looks like and perhaps for those of you in the young generation, you do not know how a coup d'etat looks like. We'll show you tonight how a coup d'etat looks like. We'll give you a one minute feel of the sense of a coup d'etat. And then you can understand how very, very reckless Mr. Anidoho's comments are tonight. And then we'll follow the story of the police. Meanwhile, we have put together a montage for you. It's a montage that represents the personality of Mr. Anidoho. And it's a montage that also establishes what he's trying to overthrow, which is the mandate that was given to the MPP administration at the election of December 2016. And it's a montage that's also funny and interesting. Have a look at it. Here's the montage right now. We want to assure our supporters and Ghanaians that President Mahama is in a comfortable lead as far as the presidential vote is concerned. We have always known that the MPP will misbehave, but let their misconduct conduct and their misbehavior not deter you and scare you. Somebody should tell Nana Kufado. Masa, history has a very interesting way of repeating itself. On the 13th of January 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutu Achampo eh? mm -hmm. removed, led an insurrection, led a, a movement that removed the Progress Party from power. 
Bouzia was the prime minister, Aku Fabio Sada was the ceremonial president. Somebody should tell Aku Fabio that history has an interesting way of repeating itself. I'm telling you, history has a very interesting way. Oh, Master Amida Makan, history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Because, uh, 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 President, Yen Timas, no, no, but General, they are working a very serious power. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, Captain. There will be a civil revolt. There will be a people's movement. Now, uh, President Mahama Wapawa. Now, President Mahama Wapawa. Let my vote count for me, occupy Ghana, for Maza. Only got a woman to present Mahama Adiaso. Uh, but Uber, oh, Uber, Uber refers to Ignatius Kutu. Oh, Joshua Kabadia, Mami Majima. Uber refers to Ignatius Kutu a champo. Se wa babe tu e ye kufu adu papa. And you busy ya. Se his view will repeat itself. And no ne ne civil revoke. And no ne ne civil revoke. General Pacho, I want to I say hey, who? Are you president? Yeah. There will be a civilian coup d'état. Hey. There will be a social revolution. Hey. We are starting on Wednesday. The movement is starting on Monday, Wednesday. Civilian coup d'état. The super prime. The number two. The super prime. The number two. Ghana. So so for baby. You have a mouth full. Dr. Papa Kwesindu of the PPP had 105,682 votes, being 1%. Mr. Nana Akufado of the New Patriotic Party had 5,716,026 votes, being 53.85%. On the basis of the foregoing figures, and by the power vested in me as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, and the returning officer for the presidential election, it is my duty and my privilege to declare Nana Adodankwa Akufuado as a president-elect of the Republic of Ghana. <laughs> We have set up a program today to look at the, uh, the, the matter of causing financial loss to the states to give you some details of the law, where it can be found in the criminal code, what the courts have said about this interpretation. Some legal analysis is what we had purported to do for tonight until this uh, unfortunate story broke of my very good friend, Mr. Anidoho, with whom I shared some pleasantries last Monday at the British Council Hall when we had the sanitation conference of Imani where he made the statement. Now, it is a statement that we are all passionate about as journalists, as Ghanaians, as political scientists, because coup d'etat, whether civilian as he put it or not, is what we don't want in this country. And he likened it to the 1972 event which he praised and heralded. Tonight, we'll show you that montage that you just 
saw again if you just come home and you're just missing it we'll show it to you again so don't worry relax and get the import of the rest of our program we want to take you back and tell you what happened and show and demonstrate that the 1972 event was a sad commentary on the history of Ghana that no one no politician in current uh, politics in Ghana should even make reference to it and make a positive reference to it and say that this is what happened in 1972 and it will happen again he should be ashamed of himself to, you, can, you can talk about a revolution, you can talk about a demonstration, but you cannot say that what happened in 1972 would happen again. You heard the presenter on Happy FM telling him that what he had said is very, very serious. It's serious, it's unforgivable, it's unthinkable, and it should be washed down to the bin of political discourse. We've never heard this before. Now I've covered politics for a very long time in this country. No politician under the Fourth Republic has ever said that we're going to have a coup d'etat or we should have a coup d'etat or something that happened in the old coups, whether it was February 1966, whether it was January 1972, whether it was June 4th, 1979, or whether it was 31st December 1981. Even J.J. Rawlings himself has never, ever said that those things must happen again. Every time he celebrates the anniversary of 31st December and June 4th, Mr. Rollins is usually apologetic and use the occasion to call for unity of Ghanaians. Now how much more you Koko Anidoho come and say that what happened in 1972 should happen again? Do you know what happened in 1972, how it took Ghana back? Now let's walk you through the process, viewers. Let's walk you through the process of 1972. So elections had been conducted in 1966, 1969, uh, Professor Buzia and his Progress Party had won. Forgive me because I promised that I was going to do the difference between the parliamentary political system and the presidential. We have still not done it. We will do it. We'll definitely do it. You know, but, but this is what it is. I'm going to walk you through the process by video and you'll see the evidence. Then I'll show you what a coup d'etat looks like. The thing that Mr. Nido is calling for. I'll show you what it looks like. And in our country's history, we had had three times the interruption of civilian regimes. Professor Adai Mensah of the CPP has something to say about it. We're going to hear Professor Buzia will speak, General Kutua Champon will speak, Flies Lieutenant Rawlings will speak, and Professor Adai Mensah will speak. You know that on this program, we are the custodians of Ghana's political history. I'm sure that by now, you've given us that title. This is Professor Buzia when he was sworn in after he was elected as the leader of the party that won majority of the parliamentary seats in 1969. Under that system, that's how it was. The, the, the leader of the, of, the, of the party that wins majority becomes a prime minister. So our first prime minister was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah of blessed memory. And our second prime minister was Professor Buzia. This is how he was sworn in um, on the morning of, um, I believe, October 1969. Prime Minister of the Republic of Ghana, do hereby, in the name of God, swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Ghana as by law established, that I will uphold the integrity of the Republic of Ghana, that I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge my duties as Prime Minister of the National Assembly and that I will do right to all manner of people in accordance with the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana and the laws and conventions of Parliament without fear or favor or affection or ill will. So help me God. So that was the swearing in of Prime Minister Kofi Abrifa Buzia, who was overthrown in what Koko Anidoho is praising and is asking for a repetition, for which reason he's in the grips of the police tonight. And we'll get the latest from you. Our reporter, Walanya, has just come from the police headquarters. He'll be telling us the details. And he'll be showing you what you've not seen yet. Johnson Asidu Katia's last statement, his last testament tonight. He's spoken so many times at the police headquarters, but his last testament was captured by our cameras, and you'll be seeing it on Good Evening Ghana tonight. It's now 32 minutes past nine. That means it's uh, 28 minutes to the top of the hour, 10 o'clock. It's not a very happy moment for us because one of our politicians has sadly let us down. Nice gentleman, of course, Koko Anidoho is a firebrand. I saw him on Monday, we exchanged pleasantries, but he has so, so badly let all of us down. We hope that next time he appears in the cameras, he'll be coming to apologize for this. We hope that once he apologizes, the police will let it go. But this is a very sorry point for us. It's a sad moment. He's the only 
leading politician in the Fourth Republic that has made such a dastardly statement against the establishment of the democracy, which people have died for, people have been maimed for, people have been killed for, and we have established a democracy under the Fourth Republic. The whole world is calling Ghana uh, the, the beacon of democracy. And here is a leading politician, the first ever in the Fourth Republic, to cite an example of a coup d'etat in 1972 and say we should go back to it, that we are preparing to go back to it because Parliament has passed an agreement with the American government that he doesn't like. It's not, it's not how it should behave. Parliament passed an agreement with the American government you don't like, so we should go and do a coup d'etat. My goodness, this is sad. This is a sorry point. Those who know him, you can apologize for him. This is ugly. This is very, very bad. It's horrible. He shouldn't do that. Look at the coup maker that he was talking about tonight, General Ignatius Skutu Achampo, another fine general. I have to say that Achampo was a fine general. And when he came to government, he did some good things. I'll show you how he started, and I'll show you how he ended, how the Ghanaian people were cheering when he ended. It's a sad matter, so we don't want to talk about it. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission established by the Kufu administration has dealt with all of these matters, and we thought there are matters that we can put to the ash heap of history, put it away in history and say that that's the end of the story. We didn't think that Koko Anyudoho would come back and come and do something like this. On my birthday, wow, here is General Kutua Champo, one of his famous speeches at the Independence Square. Here is him. Listen to him. I also want to advise the general public to reciprocate so that a congenial atmosphere may be created for all of us to work for the good of Ghana. Long live the Ghana Armed Forces. Long live the revolution. Long live the National Redemption Council. Long live Ghana. As you go home, remember that the revolution continues unabated. That's him. So those of you who are young, of course, uh, I wasn't born in 72, but those of you who are, who are not born like me, that, that's the general. That's General Kutua Champon. I need to hope mention his name in, in his, uh, his narrative that Kutu Achampo, this is what he wants us to return to. Long live Ghana and those of you go home, the revolution goes on unabated. So the revolution went on unabated until a certain flying of flight lieutenant arrived on the scenes, first in May and second in June. And when he came in June, he took them away in a manner that we don't want to remember because we have had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That's why it's called Truth and Reconciliation. We sorted that out. As a country, we are moving forward. Everyone is part of the Ghanaian society. Our leaders, our chiefs, our students, our peoples, our parliamentarians are all part of the Ghanaian society. We are all not perfect. We try to sort this out. But we have agreed that never again are we going to hear gunshots and we'll hear an announcement on GBC radio and somebody says that I have taken over the country. That will never, ever happen again. And for the last 25 years, now 26 years, we are celebrating an uninterrupted civilian rule under the Fourth Republic. And here comes this politician who now is taking us back. And people turn up on the streets and are in support of what? What are they supporting? We'll be hearing Johnson say doing Katia tonight, what he said at the end. What is he supporting? This is wrong. It's wrong all day long. We, want, we don't want to go back to the coup d'etat. Do, I don't understand. So if you're in opposition, you have to want a coup? My goodness. But it's not the first time the NDC is going to opposition. Professor Mills was in opposition for two terms, and he never said a coup. Professor Mills, their leader, the distinguished professor, John Mahama has been in opposition. He never talked that. Why is Kokwa Nidoho doing that? I mean, sometimes we take things for granted, but if you look at the montage that we put across, you know that he had been showing some of these sentiments right from the night of the election defeat when he said they were in the commanding league, et etc. And now he comes up with this. And people are going, that's, that's what shocks me. People are on the streets and they are cheering. Of course, yesterday you saw the Joy FM video. Didn't you see it? Where the people were talking to the Joy FM reporter called Kamala Adum, and they were telling him that they don't know. They spoke in Ghana. They said they didn't know why they had come to the court. They said they should come and give somebody fans. That's what they said, that they should come and give somebody fans. That's what they said in the video. And I think that it also speaks to the unemployment of the youth. And I sincerely hope that the MPP government is going to tackle that matter. Because you see, if the youth are unemployed, you have these things happening. People are busy, today's a working day. If they were busy working, whatever kind of work, gainfully employed, they will not go to the police headquarters and make noise. We'll show you some of the pictures of how they conducted themselves at the police headquarters. But Kukwa Jido should never say this, that we should have a coup d'etat. This is a cool announcement I'm going to show you. It's by Flight Lieutenant Rawlins. It's in June 1979, on the morning of Monday, June 4th, 1979. For those of you who were not born then and who have never heard it before, this is how a cool d'etat looks like. This is how it looks like. Hear it. 
Yeah, to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. You heard that? That's how a coup d'etat looks like. Let's hear it again. Let's hear Flight Left and Rollins again. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without... I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed had to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realized that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. You hear how the coup d'etat looks like? The coup leader is saying that some people want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, don't stand in their way. They are going to have bloodshed. That's what coup d'etat looks like. Those of you who don't know, that's what coup d'etat looks like, oh. That's Fly Left and Rollins. Saying that some people want bloodshed. So don't stand in their way, for heaven's sake. Because if you stand in their way, they will, be, they will shed more blood. So Mr. Rollins is negotiating the amount of blood that can be shed. This was 79, June 1979. The last but one coup d'etat in Ghana. Flight Lieutenant Rollins, head on Radio Ghana, negotiating that if you stand in the way of the coup makers, because they want bloodshed, if you stand in their way, there will be more bloodshed. Let's hear it again. That's Rollins. That's how a coup looks like. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. Hmm. I'm reading the comments on Facebook. They are very interesting. Some people support the statement that Kokwa Nidoho made, that because parliament has passed or is about to pass or did pass an agreement that appears unpalatable to them and they are beginning a demonstration, a series of demonstrations against the agreement tomorrow, we should overthrow the government like it happened in 1972 with Achampong. And history has a way of repeating itself. You, you are clamoring. There's a clamor from Mr. Nidoho's voice that history must repeat itself. The history that we have put in the dustbin, he wants to resurrect it and repeat itself. And you think that Ghanaians are happy, will be satisfied with that. And those of you who agree with him, show me the part that you agree with. If you can show me one part that you agree with in his statement, even the presenter that was interviewing him didn't agree with him. And we'll show you the montage and you hear him. The presenter warned him that what you're saying is very serious. And he was saying it on public radio, that the history that we have put to the dustbin. We should go and resurrect it. And that's how Ghana should move forward, simply because you were whipped in an election just in December. When you thought you were in a commanding lead, you were in a distant defeat. When you were in a distant defeat, you thought you were in a commanding lead. And, and so you came across and said you're in a commanding lead. Results came and you found out that you, it has been the heaviest defeat in the history of the Fourth Republic. So you're unhappy with that. You're uncomfortable with that. There's another election in 2020. Get, get yourself together and win it. And you can win it because NDC have won elections before. NDC have lost elections before. The MPP have won elections. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, Everybody might have as well realize 
that the ranks have brought the brunt of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not get in their way. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the brunt of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not beg in their way. So my concern was about those who are supporting Mr. Anido. I am totally shocked that in today's Ghana, not everyone is condemning the statement. We remember Kennedy Japan made a statement some time ago. He said uh, two tribes, they should die or something like that. And there was a united condemnation of his statement. Two tribes should die. There was a united condemnation of his statement. There was, wasn't there? There was. So. How can anybody talk about the coup of 1972 to repeat itself? And some people are able to support it. We are ready to show you some of the videos, the last uh, pictures that were taken from the, the police headquarters. Professor Adai is a politician and an academic scholar who is widely respected across the world. Mr. Adai Mensah gave us an interview in one of our documentaries, and we talked to him about what his regrets are about Ghana, because he was the general secretary of the winning uh, People's National Party, the party that won the 1979 election, was a party of Dr. Hila Lehman, and uh, Hila won the election in the second round against the Popular Front Party of Victor Ousu. Ousu had gone into the second round with Lehman after the two of them led after the first round. The first round had interesting candidates like Colonel Banasco and uh, William Oforiatapa, Willie, etc., etc. So after we had the conversation with Adai Mensah, we asked him, Prof, what are the two, two things that you regret about the history of Ghana's politics? This is what he said. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Lehman. If you look at the, uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Lehman. If you look at the, uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything, those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Lehman. If you look at the, uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything, those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Lehman. If you look at the uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything. That was Professor Ivan Adaimensa speaking over there uh, in that interview. Walana has joined us. And um, uh, hello, Walana. Yes. Uh, welcome to the program. I, I, I thought you were going to show, okay, yeah, there he is. Uh, hello, <laughs> thank you. So you're coming from the heat at the police headquarters. Yes. So we'll ask you the details of what's happening there, and then you'll give us some shots uh, yeah. uh, of what you saw. Yeah. We are very interested in what I said Katia told these people at the end of the conversation. Mm. Uh, but before that, uh, before we go to that, those of you who have joined the program late, and that's Walan, your shot over there. Those of you who have joined the program late, let's go and see the montage that we put together for you. Uh, it's an interesting montage. It's funny in some cases, but it actually makes the point. It makes the point. Here it is. I want to assure our supporters and Ghanaians that President Mahama is in a comfortable lead as far as the presidential vote is concerned. We have always known that the MPP will misbehave, but let their misconduct conduct and their misbehavior not deter you and scare you. Somebody should tell me now, Kufado. Master, history has a very interesting way of repeating itself. 
On the 13th of January 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutu Achampo eh? mm -hmm. removed, led an insurrection, led a, a, a movement that removed the Progress Party from power. Buzia was the Prime Minister, Akufadu Sada was the ceremonial president. Somebody should tell Anna Kufadu that history has an interesting way of repeating itself. I'm telling you, history ah. has a very interesting way. Oh, Masa Mida Makan, history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Because, uh, 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 President, no, no, but generally, I won't care. You're very serious about it. Oh, no, 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 uh, but Uma, Uma reference to Ignatius Kutu. Oh, Joshua Kambadi. Mami Uma, Uma. Uma reference to Ignatius Kutu a champo. Say what Baba two a year kufuado papa. Any busier? Say his name will repeat itself. And no name yet civil revoke. And no name yet civil revoke. General Pacho, I want to hear. I say, are you president? Yeah. There will be a civilian coup d'état. Hey. There will be a social revolution. Hey. We are starting on Wednesday. The movement is starting on Monday, Wednesday. Civilian coup d'état. The people are fine. The people are fine. The people are fine. The people are fine. So, so, baby. You're the man of the phone. Dr. Papa Kwesindu of the PPP had 105,682 votes, being 1%. Mr. Nana Akufado of the New Patriotic Party had 5,716,026 votes, being 53.85%. On the basis of the foregoing figures, and by the power vested in me as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, and the returning officer for the presidential election, it is my duty and my privilege to declare Nana Adodankwa Akufuado as a president elect of the Republic of Ghana. <laughs> We are on Kokwa Nidoho's case. He's done something that is very sad, very, very, very sad. And we are happy that many Ghanaians and those of you watching us on Facebook, majority of you are in support of our condemnation of his reckless comment tonight. And uh, he's, he's with the police. Walanyo has joined us. So what's the latest from the police headquarters? Have the crowd dispersed? The crowd has dispersed. In fact, when you get there now, you wouldn't even see a single soul over there. Mm. Apart from the... Uh, um, two water cannons and then some other operational vehicles but they are still keeping men inside the CID headquarters uh, because the probability is that they don't know if anything could happen again so they are keeping men there but most of the men have also left um, to other places of operation um, the place is very quiet when we got there if I want just when we got there they were chasing some of the demonstrators and they were, they were firing all over so some of us had to you know just get down inside because at the point what was the concern of the demonstrators? What did they want? They wanted Kokwa Ajido who released. 
if, if you listen to the leadership carefully, some of them that I spoke to, they were more interested in either Koku getting charged and taken to court and not being kept beyond his constitutionally mandated. Which is 48 hours. Yes, and so they wanted to know. But um, the manner in which the arrest also happened also triggered the... the Has he been charged? He's been charged. Do he's, you know? been charged he's been charged um, with causing um, um, treason. First, it was uh, causing um, fear and panic, then to high treason, now to treason. So they preferred how many charges? One or two or three? Currently, it's only one that is currently holding. Which is the treason? The treason. And okay. uh, whilst there, he was uh, whisked away to an unknown place, accompanied by um, his lawyer, um, Kojoga. Kojoga, who yeah. left with him. So I wanted to, f I, was f I asked a question of uh, Sidin Ketia whether they feel that Koku is safe or would be safe. And he, he sounded very positive that they are very sure that... Uh, so who asked the crowd to leave? Was it Johnson and Sidin Ketia who eventually asked you, them to leave? Yes, event because th the leadership were trickling in and out. Mm -hmm. um, I saw Spugabra there, Ju Professor Jushala B. Um, Bernard Mona was there. Was, was President John Mahama there? No, he wasn't. Was Vice President Pakwisi Misata there? No, none of, not, none of those people were there. Mm. But was Julius Debra there? He wasn't around. But uh, Kofi Potofi was there. Some of the legal team of the NDC, some of the uh, uh, Chris Akume, for instance, was also there. Mm. Um, the National Women's Organizer, Hajia Mahama, was also there. Mm -hmm. We spoke to a couple. This gentleman was arrested. The gentleman um, in red we are seeing on yes, our the screen Yes, the one now. in red because... Uh, the police alleged that he had been one of the main instigators of, of, of those who were throwing stones. Um, oh, they held stones at the police or into the police headquarters? Into the police headquarters, as I spoke to some of the... Mm. When, when, when I tried to... And, you and know, that, that's you? That's myself. Um, that's myself in there trying to... That's a gentleman who is also a journalist who got wounded in the process because the canister from the tear gas hit him right uh, in the leg. So um, those are some of the shots. So the, the crowd had come there purposely um, in solidarity, as the leadership put it, um, to get Okay, Koku. yeah, they are singing solidarity songs. Yes, yeah, they are singing. W were they singing party songs, or what songs were they singing? Uh, they were singing party songs when General came out finally to come and address us. A student could also joining in the, in the singing before he addressed the media finally, and out of what he said um, to the crowd, the crowd dispersed finally. So this happened about 8 o'clock tonight? Yes, just this mm. evening. Okay, let's, if we have the, uh, the address by Johnson and Sidney Katia, let's see it, if that's possible. Let's see it now, uh, if we can, so that we can put the matter in perspective. Is that it? Yes, the, um, it's, it, it, it will be playing very soon for... <laughs> and so he's been weeks out. We have, however, accompanied him. We have asked lawyers to accompany him. So the lawyers will communicate to us where he's taken to, and then we will decide any, our next any, step. Any on, we heard that he's been charged. charged. Well, they keep on changing the charges. From what to In what the first that? place, hmm. they said uh, he's guilty of causing fear and panic. Then they change the charges to high treason. Now they say, now they say from high treason to treason. We don't know what that one means, but whatever happens, tomorrow demonstration will happen. And when it, tomorrow early in the morning from Obrasport, and when we we are done with the demonstration, we will by all means. Solidarize yeah. with our colleagues. General, I'm a little and curious. Sure. General, I'm a little curious. You are embarking on a demonstration. We need police protection, and here you are. We have the secured police. that police protection. Mm. If they like, they should renege on it's their responsibility camp. to protect us. General, it's safe. But we are he's very, very safe. He's there with our lawyers. Okay. So we will do the demonstration. After the demonstration, we would come and continue solidarizing. Would have, by which time we would have known where he's being but, kept. But would you say you are disappointed with the turn of events at the moment? The turn of events at the moment? Not this moment. I'm disappointed with the type of governance in this country. Exactly. And that is exactly. why. That is why it is legitimate for every citizen who is a taxpayer to call for the government to do the right thing or quit. So it is legitimate for Kwaku to call for the, the, the quitting of this government. So because there is a social... Why not? As a legitimate citizen of this country, who is a taxpayer, 
He has engaged in a social contract with the government to pay his taxes, discharge his duties as a citizen, but the government has to deliver. If the government is not delivering, then the government, knowing that the kitchen is too hot, must quit. No, so, 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 so it is legitimate. General, 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 finally. Doho is a, not a military man. Kwakwanyi Doho doesn't command the military. Right. So he can only convince people. And if the masses are convinced that we have a wrong government, the masses have the legitimate rights to... Uh, 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 so uh, finally, uh, General, you charge them to sleep home, here, now you tell them they should go home? I am saying that they should go and prepare for tomorrow's yes. massive action. Yes. This is the beginning. We will follow it till we secure the sovereignty of this country. We will not allow anybody to subject the independence of this country to this uh, shameful uh, uh, act of misgovernance. So we are fighting for the sovereignty of Ghana. We are protecting the independence of Ghana because this independence and sovereignty was secured on the toils and the blood of our forefathers. We are in charge now. If we cannot add anything, we should be careful not to sell the independence to anybody. So we will continue the fight. Aluta continua victory. Aluta <laughs> continua indeed. That's John Senasedu Katia, the indefatigable general secretary of the NDC. And you saw him struggling with words, talking about the government should quit. My goodness. A government should accede to Katia, the general secretary of the opposition, says that a government, when he finds that the, the kitchen is too hot, they should quit. Now, how do governments quit? I don't, I've never ever heard something before. Governments should quit. Your guy is talking about coup d'etat has been arrested, and then you, you say that a government should quit. Anyway, uh, I think they also do have their legitimate basis for that. And um, uh, so, what do we expect tomorrow, Wala? Tomorrow, in fact, this has fed into what is going i don't know how tomorrow is going to be like but uh, i spoke to the national youth organizer of the ndc and um, he says that they've issued some notices to all the uh, their branches across the country to come in their numbers um, to come and support um, tomorrow's uh, march and so tomorrow uh, judging from what happened um, um, this evening right from the morning up until this evening um, I believe that if care is not taken tomorrow, things probably might degenerate. Mm, okay, that's a good warning from a news reporter here that uh, if care is not taken, things will degenerate. Very, very shameful act from Kokwa Nidoho. We hope that he will come out of the police uh, um, custody and say that he's, uh, he's sorry for it. He will urge other politicians not to make such statements. And we can all move on nicely because we are nice people, aren't we? For 25 years, we've been doing this democracy thing and we're, we are quite happy with it. We are nice people. We don't want people to jeopardize. Even Fly Lieutenant Ron is the author of Coup d'Etat. He had three Coup d'Etat. He's not praise coup d'etat in all his uh, eight years as constitutional rule uh, president. He's not said these things, and he's never said these things since then. And then Kokoa Nidoho comes and he says, well, it's totally disappointing, it's shameful, it's embarrassing, and it's a sorry point on, on uh, Ghana's political uh, history so far. Uh, 25 years of distinguished uh, democratic leadership, turning over government three times. Government lose elections and they accept defeat. It doesn't happen in other countries. It doesn't. Doesn't. You saw what happened in Gambia. Ghanaian soldiers had to go to Gambia to ensure that Ayajame would accept that he's lost the elections. There's been a runoff in Sierra Leone. We are hoping that it will all be well. Liberia, learn from our example. You know, Cote d'Ivoire struggled to get it right. You know, Nigeria is always struggling to get it right until the last time. Ghana has been getting it right for 25 years. And you come and say that we should go back to what happened in 1972. That's just, I mean, I don't know how much more I can describe this matter. But um, it, it is... It is, it's so worrisome, so worrisome. And uh, Kokoa Nidoho should move himself away from this deviant behavior. This is obviously a deviant behavior of an adult politician. An adult politician perpetrating such deviant, irresponsible, and reckless behavior should never happen again. We hope that he'll come out and apologize and all sleeping dogs will be made to lie. Uh, people are still writing on our Facebook page. It's been a very massive engagement on our Facebook page over the last one hour. We will have to show you the montage again because some people still haven't seen it. And we come back to the studio and we cut the birthday cake. I enjoy a bit of my uh, last, what, two hours left for the rest of the day. I've had a fantastic day. I've had a blast. And then uh, I'll share my cake with you 
on television by cyber. Those of us in the studio will just uh, uh, cut it and enjoy it. Let's see the montage. By the time you finish watching the montage, you see my cake. We want to assure our supporters and Ghanaians that President Mahama is in a comfortable lead as far as the presidential vote is concerned. We have always known that the MPP will misbehave, but let their misconduct conduct and their misbehavior not deter you and scare you. Somebody should come and ask who Fado. Master, history has a very interesting way of repeating itself. Well. On the 13th of January 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutu Achampo eh? mm -hmm. removed, led an insurrection, led a, a movement that removed the Progress Party from power. Bouzia was the Prime Minister, Akufadu Fada was the ceremonial president. Somebody should tell Anaku Fadu that history has an interesting way of repeating itself. I'm telling you, history has a very interesting way. Oh, Master Amida Makan, history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Because, uh, 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 President, no, no, but, but uh, General, the award can be very serious, pal. I want to know. I want to know. That's what I mean. Who can say? Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Captain. There will be a civil revolt. There will be a people's movement. Now, now, President Mahama, what power? Now, now, President Mahama, what power? Let my vote count for me, occupy Ghana, for mother. I'm going to move to President Mahama, I guess. Uh, but Uma, Uma reference to Ignatius Kutu. Oh, Joshua Kabadia, Mami Majima. Uma reference to Ignatius Kutu a champo. Say, or Baba too, a year Kufuado Papa. And no busier. Say, his will repeat itself. And no, then yes, civil revoke. And no, then yes, civil revoke. General Pacha, one year. I said, Are you talking about? Yeah. There will be a civilian Kudipa. Hey! There will be a social revolution. There will be a social revolution. Hey! We are starting on Wednesday. The movement is starting on Monday, Wednesday. Civilian could it have the super time? The number two, the super time in the number two, Ghana. So, so, baby, 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 you're not fooling. Dr. Papa Kwesindu of the PPP had 105,682 votes, being 1%. Mr. Nana Akufado of the New Patriotic Party had 5,716,026 votes, being 53.85%. On the basis of the foregoing figures, and by the power vested in me as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, and the returning officer for the presidential election, it is my duty and my privilege to declare Nana Adodankwa Akufuado as a president elect of the Republic of Ghana. <laughs>
Hello, welcome back. So we have to close. It was going to be a very good day, but it's turned out to be a sad day. Massive comments on face Facebook and people are disagreeing and people are agreeing. We are delighted that more people are agreeing than those disagreeing. Those of you disagreeing, we hope that you'll be converted and you will see reason and understand that our country doesn't need that, whether it's from NDC, whether it's from MPP. We don't need it. We actually don't need it. You cannot use your political callous, uh, allow your political callous to blind you into this uh, uh, confusion. Kokwa Anidoho was wrong. He was definitely wrong. He was wrong all day long. No one, and none of you writing to us have been able to say that he was right. You are just throwing the, the normal jabs, which is okay. I mean, uh, we have been doing journalism for a long time, and here at Metro TV, we receive the jabs. It's fine. The jabs are okay. We don't worry about that. But stick to the facts if you can, and show us where in the statement that you can say that this was correct. He was totally wrong, very, very wrong. All day, all day long, he's wrong. And let's tell him that. Let him come and apologize, and then let's move on. Okay, so in the name of Almighty God, our protector, uh, the God of Psalm 35, I cut my cake myself here in the studio live. Go and read Psalm 35. It says that the angel of the Lord will chase them and he will, make, he, will make, he will make their ground slippery. Psalm 35 is one of those I love most. It's one of the Psalms that King David wrote when he was being pursued by his enemies. The God of Psalm 35 and the God of Jeremiah 43. He will protect us in the name of that God. The God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. The God of Elijah, the God of Elisha, the God of Isaac and Jacob. He is our Lord. He is Elohim. And we come all the time to lift up the hands of Elohim. In the name of that God, I cut this cake. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. If you can join us here at Metro TV, the celebration is starting. There's loud music here, and we're going to have a lot of fun. On that funny note, we hope that things will get well with Mr. Anidoho and the police. And we sincerely hope that you'll come out and say that I, I said it. I'm sorry. We hope so. Thanks for watching. Good night.